In this video, I'll be sharing my best advice for how to build a strong company culture when you have a virtual team. Uh, hey, hey everyone, um, I'm in the middle of a recording session. Can we meet back here in 10 minutes? Okay, sure. 10 okay, minutes, good? good? Okay. My name is Kyle Sellerud, and I'm the founder of AdLeg, a marketing agency that specializes in YouTube ads. And my entire team is virtual. Even team members who are right down the road from me are working remotely. As the team grew, I started hearing people talk about company culture, about how great our company culture is. And it really caught me off guard at first. I had never really thought about building a company culture, I didn't even think that a virtual team could really have a culture. Once I realized that we really do have a great company culture, and once I started to see the benefits of that, I became fully on board, and now I see AdLeg's culture as one of the most important parts of our business. With a lot of help from my team, here are seven things we've identified that are responsible for AdLeg's positive company culture. Strong core values. Your core values are going to, at first, be a reflection of you as the leader. But these shouldn't be set in stone. These should evolve to become a reflection of your team. Core values are principles, things that your team can stand behind when they're doing their work. It tells them what is most important, what is acceptable, what is not acceptable, and it really helps to unify the team and make sure everybody is working in alignment. If you don't have a set of core values, I recommend sitting down, working through them. And if you already have a set of core values, I'd recommend reviewing them. I just did this recently, and we moved some of our core values around, combined some things, added some new things, and it was a really great exercise. Clear objectives and a shared vision. Ask anyone at my company what our objectives are and what the company's vision is, and they'll be able to tell you because we talk about these things all the time. Everyone should be able to think big picture about the business and know exactly how their role fits in. Here's something one of my team members said about this point. It's one thing to do your work because it's your job, because you need a paycheck to live. It's a completely different thing to do your work because you feel that you belong to a group on a mission. That makes people like me want to give sweat and blood to help my group and to be valued and fulfilled. If you want team members to think like that, then you need a mission that they can get behind. Have regular Zoom meetings. Now, this might be a given that if you have a virtual team, you're going to be meeting on Zoom, but I wanna point out some things that work really well for us in our Zoom meetings that help bring the team together. First, make sure everyone's video is showing. I've been in Zoom meetings with clients and other companies and people's cameras were off and it just felt disconnected. If you want your team to come together and to build strong relationships, then it should be required that when you meet, your cameras are on. Also, take some time to joke around and get to know each other. You don't need to be all business all the time, especially with a virtual team, because when you're not meeting, and you're just working on your own, it is all business all the time. Taking some time in your meetings to actually joke around, get to know each other better is a great use of time. I don't feel like that is wasted time at all. We even have Zoom calls where all we do is play a game. Now, these aren't mandatory, but most of the team shows up anyway because we enjoy each other's company and we want to keep building our relationship so that we work better as a team. Use Slack with a lot of GIFs and custom emojis. I wanna read another quote from one of my team members here. We use Slack to facilitate group conversations not only around work tasks, but also personal wins and fun things while also completely abusing emojis and GIFs in all channels. This may sound completely unprofessional to you, 
And you might be cringing at the thought of your team members using GIFs and emojis all over the place when talking about work inside of Slack. And that's fine. Not every team needs the same culture. But for us, this works really well. GIFs and custom emojis allow my team members to express their personalities. We have tons of inside jokes as a result, and it helps bring the team closer together while also having fun, enjoying their work, enjoying their teammates. It's a win, 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 win. Speaking of Slack, one channel that I set up in Slack is called Core Values. This channel is all about identifying team members who exemplify one or more of our core values and calling them out and giving them praise for it. When I set this channel up, I didn't know how well it was going to be received, but it turned out to be an amazing place for teammates to celebrate one another and to keep everyone focused on the core values. Here's what one of my team members has to say about this channel. It feels great getting a shout out, but even better giving one and showing your appreciation for your coworkers, celebrating them a little bit, not letting achievements go unnoticed. We have another Slack channel titled Happy Notes, where we celebrate wins, and the Core Values channel and the Happy Notes channel are my two favorite channels in Slack. Trust. Several of my team members mentioned trust as being a big factor that contributed to our company culture. They mentioned things like being able to question the status quo. In fact, question everything is one of our core values. They mentioned including team members in process building. It's not a top-down hierarchy. And not only does this achieve more buy-in, but we actually come up with better processes as a result of getting everybody involved. I also want to mention a cardinal sin when it comes to trust building. You should not be recording any of your team members' screens. I know there are softwares that do this, and some people think that if you have employees who aren't sitting right next to you, that they're going to screw off all day and you need to be able to see what they're doing and hold them accountable. Well, nothing is going to destroy trust more quickly than looking over people's shoulders all day, even if you're doing it virtually. Don't focus on the process and what they're doing so much as the result. If they're achieving the result you want, then you can trust that they're following a process that is helping them get there. You don't need to watch the whole process. Hire for culture fit. The last point I'll make here is that you should be hiring people and only people who are a good fit for your company culture. It doesn't matter how technically proficient you are at something. If you're not going to fit into my company's culture, I'm not going to hire you. If you can't get behind my company's core values and our vision, or if you can't stand the thought of using GIFs and custom emojis in Slack, then it's not going to be a good culture fit, and it's best for both of us if you go in a different direction. Not only would it be bad for you, but it would be bad for the team and would probably start to bring some of us down. One of my team members had this to say about hiring for culture. You hire the right people. I don't know what your hiring process looks like exactly, but we all get along really well, which is amazing. Bottom line, if someone's not a good culture fit, they're not gonna make their way onto my team. Luckily, we have a great culture that a lot of people fit into, so we don't need to turn away too many people because they're not a good culture fit. And that enables us to hire some of the best people in the world at what they do. I hope you enjoyed this video and got some great ideas for how you can build a strong, positive company culture, even if you have a virtual team. Tell me about what you are doing. Leave a comment below. Let me know what would you add to this list about how to build a strong company culture. And one last thing, as AdLeg continues to grow, we're always looking for great people to join our team. If you like what we're doing here and you wanna be a part of it, then check out our careers page to see if there are any opportunities that would be a good fit for you. I'll put a link to that page in the description of this video. Thanks for watching this video. Again, my name is Kyle Sullerud, and I'll see you in the next video.